welcome to this discussion, where we're going to talk about the Nordic Report 3, which is a part of a publication series about current innovation within sustainable consumption and production in the Nordic countries. These reports strive to spread awareness and influence domestic and international policy. I'm sitting here with Anders Wikman. Anders, you're an opinion leader, an author. You have extensive uh, experience in sustainable development. You've had a career in everything from Secretary General of the Swedish Red Cross to Member of the European Parliament. And now you're currently active in Climate Kick. You have read the report. So what themes stand out to you? Um, the report uh, touches upon many issues. One of them is the fact that the Nordic countries uh, are sharing more or less the same values, that it makes a lot of sense for the Nordic countries to cooperate. If you put the Nordic countries' economies together, we are a very, very major player. First of all, I want to say that I'm very pleased by the fact that the design community now is taking an active role in the shaping of the circular economy. Design is crucially important. We have to have products that are designed for reuse, where there is no obsolescence inbuilt, and which have a longer product life. Secondly, we need to go from owning products to benefiting from services. That would totally change the whole logic for business, for the business community. As it is today, they sort of are not responsible any longer once they have sold the product. If they own the product and lease it, then they are responsible until the end. And that means they will design it differently. With us today here, we have five Nordic experts on sustainable consumption and production. Signe Jungerstedt from Denmark, CEO and founding partner of Group NAO. You have led Copenhagen's tourism transformation. Andreas Rande from Norway. Andreas is a Norwegian environmentalist, activist, and a member of the Board in Nature and Youth. Rund Gunstein's daughter from Iceland, Managing Director at FESTA, Icelandic Center for Social Responsibility and Sustainability. Kari Herlevi from Finland, Finnish multi-skilled circular economy expert, who is currently leading the circular economy focus area at CITRA, the Finnish Innovation Fund. Eva Karlsson from Sweden. Eva is uh, the CEO of the Swedish brand uh, Houdini Sportswear. Houdini is a sustainable outdoor clothing company with a product philosophy centered around products with long life, versatile performance and minimalist constructions. What does the paradigm shift within sustainable production and consumption mean to you in your work? For me, the paradigm shift needs to be about shifting but it also needs to be about reduction. A shift in mindset, that is the most important to me. That we, that we enable ourselves to think differently about what's valuable and how we use resources. Making sure that the materials are better used in the society in the first place and we can make more out of less. To build awareness and to build an understanding of the impact of individual choices. I think it has to do with uh, ways in which we sense the urgency and then how willing we are to open up our minds to the different options and how we can address these urgencies. You have to have an emotional and a rational way of looking at things the way they are and realize that they're completely upside down and that we can create something much, much better together. The biggest industry in Norway is producing oil and gas and we need to start producing renewable energy uh, instead. But also uh, we need to simply produce less. How can a circular economy play a significant role globally? We're trying to design a, a circular ecosystem, much like how nature works. Circulate better these materials, innovate in the business models, how we actually use these um, end products houses and transportation, cars, etc. We could actually uh, reduce heavy industry emissions uh, by 50% already by 2050. We have to create products that are circular in themselves so that at the end of life or next life when the product is worn out, hopefully a very long lifetime first and then 
eventually a product wears out, then it has to be easy to bring back into the system and we have to bring it back without a loss of value. We should uh, uh, shift from designing products to uh, design more services because uh, there we could actually uh, make a better impact and uh, make sure that uh, people are not just buying and owning things but they are more or less uh, uh, benefiting of the end usage. How well does a closed loop recycling system work? We have uh, managed really, really well at designing our products for circularity. But in a systemic perspective, there's a lot of work still to do. Um, and recycling systems and the infrastructure for recycling, that is not in place. Let's hear from Anders. It is cheaper for a company to source virgin materials as compared to secondary materials or recycled materials. And as long as this is the case, circularity or moving from a linear production model to a circular production model will be very, very difficult. Eva? This is a recycled fiber. So this, is, this should be much, uh, much cheaper, I would say, or at least not more expensive than a virgin fiber, considering the efforts and the risk in, involved in uh, extracting crude oil. Many products are simply too cheap. We have to pay more for, for, for all the services and products. And, and if we pay more, it will also mean that the design will be different and we will use materials in a more responsible way. What role does the Nordic region have in leading sustainable production and consumption? The things that really identify us globally are things like gender equality, the welfare society, uh, and these, are, these issues are huge in many countries of the world. So if you think about the poorest countries, developing countries, countries in transition, countries in conflict, these are really valuable uh, assets that we have. Uh, and we also, some of the Nordic countries are really uh, doing well when it comes to innovation and uh, technological development. It is important to, to also to connect with the right players internationally as well and uh, make sure that the uh, Nordic are kind of, the impact is, is bigger than the kind of uh, the, the region itself internationally. So we have to have a global approach and we have to ask for different things in different parts of the world. We have to allow people in living still in poverty or in very meager conditions to, to uh, attain better living standards. At the same time, it has to be done in a way that doesn't destroy the planet. It's important to see um, the lives we lead in the Nordics in a global context, because in many ways we're privileged, and with privilege comes responsibility to do things that are good for the, for the planet and people. I think also the Nordics can, can play a very important role in their relationship with developing countries and help them build capacity and start understanding the need to move in this direction. Raise awareness that we live on one little planet. Why do you think the Nordic Report publication series is important? The Sustain Nordic is a good example of what will be key to the sustainable development shifting forward, and that's that we share what works and what doesn't. That we uh, share our ideas, because no one has the solution and no one has a crystal ball. But the, the key to this is learning from each other. The more that we join forces, like we're doing with this project, which is, I think, uh, an amazing example as well of, of collaboration in the Nordic region, the more we do this, the more we are able to not only improve the lives in our countries, but also give a good example to the world around us. The collaboration and, and cross-pollinating of ideas, I think, is it's not only important, it's also a lot of fun. What specific policy changes would make it easier to create circular products or systems? You have to educate policymakers. Most of them don't have a natural science background, which also means that some of the issues that are being discussed here are quite alien to them. Um, but I, I hope that dialogue, in this case between the design community and policymakers, can make things move in the right direction. Because you need frameworks, policy frameworks, that guide all of us in the right direction. What is needed is the strong support from the government uh, and the 
policy level to, to guide also the, the, the change in a faster way. Public policies and regulations to provide the private sector with a framework. Using the legal system in the fight for climate justice and against the destruction of nature and of our climate. I think that might become a really um, important tool for the environmental uh, movement and, and from impacted people. The main issue is that it has been too cheap to use nature. And why the hell do we tax labor like we do and not nature? In my country, Sweden, 61% of tax revenue comes from taxing labor. 5% comes from taxing energy use, resource use, and pollution. We have to tax materials more, and we have to tax labor and work less. It's urgent to get uh, legal protection uh, of nature. In what way can the circular economy help recovery from the negative consequences of the global pandemic. The COVID-19 is a perfect example of how interconnected we are on this little planet. And this is just one example, pandemics. But climate change, biodiversity loss, a financial system that is very, very uh, fragile. Uh, you could add to that exponential technologies. There are many aspects of ordinary life where we, we see these interconnectedness and where we lack resilience and where we lack preparedness for shocks. And there will be future shocks. I hope we learn a lesson from, from COVID that we, we need to reduce these risks and build resilience. And we cannot wait until the shock is upon us. With the pandemic, we will hopefully be able to get out of it. But when it comes to climate change, if it goes too far, it will be irreversible, and then there is no way back. So, so hopefully, yeah, this awareness about interconnectedness, that everything is interconnected, I think that awareness will help us to move in the right direction. Let's hear from Kari. Early research shows that uh, companies that have uh, invested in, in circular business models have performed better uh, in recent months and, and in the recent years. So. I would say and argue that uh, in the global value chains, uh, there is a shift towards more kind of a shorter value chains and, and really making sure that we are using the materials that we have in the society already and, and uh, outsourcing also closer. Signe? We've also understood now that our individual choices in terms of how we consume, what the products that we consume are, uh, are they produced sustainably, are they produced locally, and so on, can actually have a collective impact. So I think it's the power of individual choice and the consumers realizing that. What is the biggest challenge for creating change in today's environmental movement? We need fundamental shift and we need it globally, but I really believe that it starts from the local communities. And we have to act now because climate change is accelerating. Uh, and if we are responsible, and we should be responsible as ancestors, we owe it to our children and their children. People who are old, older than me uh, are better at convincing people at their own age than, than I am. And the politicians of today are older than I am. So I think um, the older people need to listen to the youth, uh, listen to our demands and join in on the movement. Mm -hmm.